Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the games we're going to be talking about today is the Dragon Quest series. So this is going to be my personal top-ranked mainline Dragon Quest game series. No spin-offs, just 1 through 11. And these games will be ranked from worst to best. So just a little disclaimer here. There are really no bad Dragon Quest games. I know some games are a little better than others, some worse than others. But if I had to choose my top 11 games, yeah, this is going to be that list. I mean, I don't want to do this, but I kind of have to. And yes, I will be including Dragon Quest X on this list because I have played quite a bit of it and I am on the latest expansion, so it will be included. So without further ado, let us begin my top 11 mainline Dragon Quest games. Number 11. Number 11 goes to Dragon Quest 2, aka Dragon Warrior 2. So I admit, I do have a lot of sentimentality towards this game. This is the first in the Dragon Quest series that I beat as a kid. But playing a lot of the games that came afterwards, yeah, Dragon Quest 2 has not aged well in comparison to the rest of them. Well, first of all, we have an absolutely insane encounter rate, and we do have one of the worst allies in the series, the Prince of Kanok, who's kind of useless for the most part. And also, by the time you do reach the end of the game, the enemies can be a bit broken and unfair. But don't get me wrong, even though Dragon Quest II is at the bottom of this list, it's still a pretty good game, but just not as good as the rest of them. Number 10. So number 10 goes to Dragon Quest VI. Now Dragon Quest VI kind of has the stigma of the one that was released after the excellent Dragon Quest V. And I do have to admit, I was a bit let down playing VI right after V, because in all honesty, I didn't quite buy the real world and the fake world thing. And also, the cast of characters isn't as memorable as other Dragon Quest games. And I do think the real world and the fake world aspects of this game does make the game a bit convoluted, and it was a bit hard for me to get into the story because I didn't care much about the characters. And in all honesty, I do have to say Dragon Quest VI is the weakest out of the Zenithian trilogy. Number 9. Dragon Quest VII, aka Dragon Warrior VII. Alright, I know what most people are going to say about this game. Yes, this game is very, very, very long. So I've never finished the original PS1 version, which I heard is about 80 to 100 hours, and going through the 3DS remake actually took me about 61 hours doing it casually, and that's pretty long. And my main gripe with this game is that there is a lot that could easily be cut out just to make it a 40 hour game and for it to flow better, but I kind of feel like they really really padded this game and didn't take anything out. Well, I do have to admit, the cast of characters in Dragon Quest VII is pretty good, but the game just goes on a little too long though. And the reason why this game takes so long is you have to solve something in the past, and then solve it in the present, then rinse and repeat. And there are a whole bunch of plot points in this game that you never hear from again, which makes most of the quests in this game feel like they're padding. Yeah, but hey, if you want a really, really long Dragon Quest experience, Dragon Quest VII is the game for you. Number 8. So number 8 goes to Dragon Quest 1, aka Dragon Warrior 1. So surprisingly, this game isn't much lower on this list, but having replayed the Switch remake recently, I actually have to rate it higher because even though it is the start of the series, it has a lot of rough edges because, you know, this is the first game, it's still a pretty solid game, and you can actually beat this game within four hours on the Switch, or if you're playing the original NES version, it probably takes around six to eight hours. And after playing through the entire Dragon Quest series, I feel like 1 is kind of the easiest game just to pick up and play and see how the whole series started. Number 7. So, number 7 belongs to Dragon Quest 9. Alright, so I know what you guys are thinking. I should really rate this much higher on the list because I know this is a lot of people's first Dragon Quest game and it was on the DS since it was portable. And the thing is, I love Dragon Quest 9. It is such a good game, but if I had to, you know, mm, kind of compare it to the rest of the games on this list, I have to put it in this place. I'm so sorry. 
because Dragon Quest IX was one of the first games to have a completely customizable hero and was the first multiplayer Dragon Quest game. But in my opinion, I do think the gameplay in this game is great, it's amazing, but I just wasn't into the story as much as the other games on this list. I'm sorry to say that. I know a lot of people are, you know, picking up their pitchforks and they want to thwack me right now. But once you hear my reasoning for the rest of the games on this list, I hope you'll understand. I mean, I love Dragon Quest IX, but so please, so... Uh... Number six. So number six belongs to Dragon Quest IV, aka Dragon Warrior IV. So Dragon Quest IV was the first to deviate from the Erdrick trilogy. It has a completely original story and is the beginning of the Zenithian trilogy. So I admit I was a bit worried playing Dragon Quest IV at first because it deviated from the Erdrick trilogy, but it does have a really, really memorable cast of characters. I love the chapter system and it has a really, really good story. And I do highly recommend playing the DS remake of this game because it does include an extra chapter, which focuses on and gives more depth to a certain character. And out of all four of the games on the original Famicom slash NES, I do think Dragon Quest slash Dragon Warrior IV does flow the best out of the four games. Number five. So number five belongs to Dragon Quest VIII. So Dragon Quest VIII was the first game to come out on the PS2 and the first game in America to have the Dragon Quest title after being called Dragon Warrior for so long. And I remember playing Dragon Quest VIII on the PS2 back in 2006 when I was in college. Holy crap! This game looked amazing at the time. Like the whole robust world in 3D. And it also had an amazing cast of characters like Yangus, Jessica, Angelo, King Trode. And I do feel like it was the most Disney out of all the Dragon Quest games. And it does have a really lighthearted and engaging story, a lot less depressing than a lot of the other Dragon Quest games, so I definitely recommend a lot of players to play this one as their first one. And if you get the 3DS version, there is a lot of extra content and an extra marriage option. Number four. So number four belongs to Dragon Quest X. And yes, I know what everybody is saying, this game is Japanese only and nobody's played it yet, but I've actually took the initiative to actually play Dragon Quest X and I am on the latest expansion. I've put over 500 hours into this game at the time of this recording. And I gotta say where Dragon Quest IX succeeded in letting us play with our friends, Dragon Quest X takes that to a whole other level. I mean, not only does Dragon Quest X have an excellent story because it feels more like a Dragon Quest game with MMO elements rather than an MMO with the Dragon Quest name on it, it's so much fun to play with your friends. And the way they integrate the multiplayer in this game is amazing. Like you can go to casinos together, you can fight monsters together, you can do the story together. And I do gotta say, playing this game with your friends is one of the best experiences that I've ever had playing multiplayer games. And I hope this game gets localized in the distant future, or if you're watching this in the distant future, maybe it's already localized. Number three. Number three belongs to Dragon Quest XI. So if you thought you were blown away by the first time you played Dragon Quest VIII on the PS2, Dragon Quest XI is basically Dragon Quest VIII on steroids. And it does feel like a Greatest Hits love letter tribute to all of the Dragon Quest games. Because it has an amazing cast of characters, a really, really emotional story, even way more than Dragon Quest VIII's. And after you beat the game, it does have a post game, which I highly, highly recommend playing through. And I've already done a massive review on Dragon Quest XI, but there's not enough good things I can say about this game. And aside from Dragon Quest VIII, I do recommend Dragon Quest XI as a first time entry to a lot of new players. Number two. All right guys, so number two goes to Dragon Quest V. I know Dragon Quest V is a lot of fans' favorite game in the series, and I remember back when the Super Famicom version was out and when the translation patch was out, a lot of people were saying, oh my god, Dragon Quest V is so amazing. It's like a game that's based on family because your family members are your actual allies, so you feel pretty emotional if like a monster kills your son or your wife. And Dragon Quest V on the DS actually came out a year after my father died, so when I finally played it, man, this game really resonated with me and hit me so much in the feels. Yeah, because the main theme of this game is family, and it tells that story very, very well, and the story of family is also well conveyed in the Your Story movie. 
And I know games like Dragon Quest VIII and Dragon Quest XI really tug at your heartstrings, but Dragon Quest V really, really tugs at your heartstrings like so much, man. And the game does have a lot of story twists that will keep you guessing what's going on, and when you finally finish the game, you can't help but feel so rewarded for everything. Because in Dragon Quest V, the hero does not get a break ever since his childhood, and to finally finish the game and finally get that reward of the ending, you feel so good about it, it's so heartwarming. I can't say enough good things about Dragon Quest V, you got to play it. And now, for number one! Alright guys, this is it. The number one Dragon Quest game in my opinion, and I think it's a lot of your favorite too, Dragon Quest 3, aka Dragon Warrior 3 on the NES! Oh boy, where do I begin with Dragon Quest slash Dragon Warrior 3? I first played this game when I was 11 years old in 1992, and it really, really pushed the limits of what the NES was capable of doing back in the day, and I put in so many hours into this game. I've beaten the game with several different parties, and I've tried a solo quest, but I didn't get very far in doing so. And this was the first game in the series to introduce the class system and creating your own party. And I know games like Final Fantasy and Ultima Exodus already did this, but I think Dragon Quest 3 has the best class building system of them all. And not only do I feel that Dragon Quest 3 has really, really amazing gameplay, it has a really, really amazing story that does tie the entire Erdrick trilogy together, and the twist at the end, man! Holy crap, you are going to go... Whoa! Because this game truly pushed the boundaries of the NES in gameplay and storytelling, and I do highly recommend the Super Famicom version, Dragon Quest 3 slash Dragon Warrior 3 is my favorite Dragon Quest game of all time! Alright guys, so that ends this episode of awesome video game memories about my top 11 mainline Dragon Quest games. So let me know yours in the comments below, and take care! Into the legend! Hey everybody, if you enjoyed this video make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribe, and make sure to click on that notification bell so you know when we release new videos because YouTube's probably not gonna tell you. And if you want to see me play games live, make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash battlegeekplus, and if you have a Twitch Prime account, make sure to subscribe so you can get awesome perks like subscriber badges and much more. And if you want to support us, make sure to support us on Patreon.com slash Ryan Molina because every dollar helps me bring you a better show. And also make sure to follow me on Twitter at ThatRyanMolina and at BattleGeekPlus. And also make sure to check out the official BattleGeekPlus website for a complete listing of our books, merchandise, t-shirts, and a lot more. Alright, thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out these other videos right here. Thanks and take care.